The overarching role of what we're trying to do is to reduce injuries in sport. In this particular project, what we're trying to do is reduce the risk of the most serious injuries that you can get, so serious spinal injuries, which can lead to long-lasting uh, problems. And what we're trying to identify are the patterns of, of falls that might actually lead to those sorts of injuries occurring. So what we've done in rugby is to try and reduce the forces in the scrum because that was the area of the sport where there was most concerns around spinal injuries. What we're doing now is to try and apply exactly the same approaches to try and reduce the chances of getting a spinal injury when you fall from a horse. So we, we have three projects at various stages I and mean, they're all running in parallel uh, and the key point here is that they use the same data source. So the digital archive, which gives us all the falls and race footage, is being used by Dublin, by Sydney and hopefully in Bath fairly soon as well. So we can look at the kinematics, the, the forces involved with falling off a horse. My hopes for the three projects is actually they will gradually come together. Um, and I think because we've got this common data source, there is good sense in the three universities working in a, in a multi-centre way because they're all looking at it in a similar fashion, even though they're looking at head injuries, spinal injuries, and jockey retraining. The injuries that we're talking about have such a big impact on individuals, their families, and also healthcare in terms of the costs, that even preventing one of these injuries is really worthwhile. And so my hope is that we can prevent more than one, um, but anything we can do to reduce any of these injuries uh, will be a success. So the point of the sensor platform is to develop some clinically validated sensors that we can use on horses. And this is going to be a wide range of sensors to look at specific vital signs and at motion and movement. So we're not just interested in heart rate, for example. We want to record many different parameters from the animals to help us learn more about their general health and well-being. So there are many different stakeholders who are going to be interested in this sort of data. The two most obvious ones that we think of are racehorse trainers and people running racehorse events. There's been a lot of publicity recently about animals at events such as Cheltenham and the industry is making significant change to address some of those problems. If we can generate new data and new information, for example looking at the stress or the fluidity of motion of an animal during an event whilst they're actually racing, that can be used to inform and change policy. The second big stakeholder group we have are veterinary practitioners. So at the moment vets, believe it or not, have access to only very limited sensing technology and often what they use are sensors that have been designed for humans. So the sort of tech you have when you go into hospital, they use the same devices and they try to attach them to animals such as horses. The problem is that horses have a different physiology and a lot of the sensors that are designed for humans really don't work very well when you apply them on animals. So one of the things that we're trying to do is develop technology specifically designed for horses. I mean, that we spend our lives trying to look at horses, trying to understand their language. Um, I work uh, with a natural horsemanship, and we try and organise it so horses are, so their horses have a certain amount of language. We work in a with games with them so that they 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 can communicate in a certain way, um, and so actually making sure that the horse is thriving is, is vital so that you're asking them to do the kind of work so they understand as much as possible what you're requiring of them that they're happy in their herd that they're happy in their training that they're happy in their traveling and the, the happier they are the, the, the better they 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 work and and then of course you have a more valuable animal to sell um, and a happier horse to train because there's no point trying to train unhappy horses it just doesn't work. The core of my research is in medical devices for humans so I work in bioelectronics um, however I've been riding horses my whole life so my mum was a riding teacher uh, and I used to ride before and after school every day for uh, nearly 20 years so horses have always been a big part of my life and this project is a real opportunity to bring together some of my professional practice in developing medical technology and sensors with the animals that have, have always been my love. Yeah, so today we have a very early prototype sensor which we fitted to one of the animals here. We've had the animal running in circles, so at a, a walk, a trot and a canter. We've been looking at heart activity and also at motion of one of the front legs. It's really interesting, so we're able to detect the different um, gates of the horse, so whether we're walk, trot or canter. And the other thing that we've been able to do is we can see from the data which rein the animal prefers, so whether the animal prefers turning predominantly left or predominantly right. Now the owner of the animal was aware of that because they're an experienced horsewoman who's able to watch the animals. But we're able to see it very clearly in our data, which means we can take someone perhaps less experienced with animals and show them the same kind of information. 
It's yeah. it's it's revolutionary. It's uh, you know I'm just so thrilled that Bath has come uh, forward with this 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 extraordinary project. Um, it shows this this wonderful lateral thinking that that Ben as a as a scientist is bringing into the horse community, where there's there's room for so much improvements. So what we want to see is this technology in in widespread adoption. You know we've talked about these two stakeholder groups, so either in in racing and sports performance or with the veterinarians. There are lots of other targets that we can explore and as we develop more and more sensors we're really interested in how do all of these parameters fit together? Can we look at modelling the health of the entire animal by measuring multiple vital signs at different times and in different ways?